Is SpaceX Starlink replacing GPS? It's a good question. Let's get into it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again, joining me for Tea Time. We have a little bit of extra hot, misty morning. So good, so good. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking space, SpaceX, Starlink, and of course, a bunch of Linux. Today is going to be a SpaceX Starlink day. And the question is, will it be replacing GPS soon or maybe sooner than later? I would say about two years ago, year and a half ago, I said it will absolutely happen. And the reason being is I did the math. And of course, math doesn't lie. And I said, there's absolutely no reason why we wouldn't replace GPS that are sitting at like 20 plus thousand kilometers with satellites that are low at about 500, 530 kilometers. It wouldn't make sense to not do so, especially for security measures. Anyways, so I was reading an article and I wanna share this with you because I think it's really interesting. And it kind of shows the path of where we're going with this whole SpaceX Starlink thing. People just look at it just simply as a means of communication, right? High-speed internet, broadband, bridging the digital divide or whatever you wanna call it. But the truth of the matter is there's a lot more implications. There's a lot more applications. There is a lot more going on here behind the scenes. And that's kind of the stuff that I like to get into, you know, looking underneath the kimono, so to speak, right? Pulling back that screen, pulling back that curtain and seeing who's running the show and what is going on. And where is the show going? Before I get into the article, I just want to say that if you enjoy the content or if you find it entertaining, throw the video a thumbs up. That's very helpful. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not. If you are, thank you. I appreciate that. Click this little notification button over here so when I go live and when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. And if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks, check them out. Go to jchristina.com forward slash books. And of course, if you want to just say thank you for all of my hard work on this channel, YouTube gave us this thanks button. You see that? It says thanks. Thank you, YouTube. If you click on that, you could give a dollar or two if you like. If not, it's perfectly fine. The video is still free. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And last but not least, if you want more SpaceX Starlink goodness, I put together a playlist, right? Don't click on it yet. I put together a playlist. It'll be right here. If you click on that, when you're done watching this video, you'll find about 480 plus videos, helpful how to's tips, tricks, what to do, what not to do, what to buy, what not to buy. And of course the why behind all of it, as always say, this channel is always about the why check those out. There's a lot of good stuff that I think you will enjoy. So let's jump right into this article. It starts out with Starlink's next frontier a GPS alternative. SpaceX's Starlink, initially designed to provide global internet coverage, is now being explored as a potential alternative to global positioning systems, or GPS. SpaceX's Starlink, initially designed to provide global internet coverage, is now being explored as a potential alternative to global positioning systems, or GPS. Researchers from the institutes like University of Texas in Austin, as well as Ohio State University, have demonstrated how SpaceX Starlink satellite signals can be intercepted for navigational purposes, offering a promising backup to traditional GPS systems. Decoding Starlink for Navigation Without direct collaboration from SpaceX, researchers have reverse engineered SpaceX Starlink's downlink signals. By analyzing the synchronization sequences embedded in these signals, they achieve locational accuracy within approximately 7.7 .7 meters. While this is slightly less precise than GPS, which typically offers accuracy between 0.3 and 5 meters, the potential for improvement is significant as SpaceX Starlink's constellation expands. Advantages over traditional GPS. Starlink satellites operate in low Earth orbit, or LEO, approximately 550 kilometers above Earth. Compared to GPS satellites in medium Earth orbit, or MEO, at about 20,000 plus kilometers, this closer proximity results in stronger signal reception on the ground, making them less susceptible to jamming or spoofing. Such resilience is crucial for military and critical infrastructure applications. Regulatory consideration and industry response. 
The Federal Communication Commission, the FCC, is currently reviewing spectrum sharing rules to accommodate advancements in space-based telecommunications. SpaceX has petitioned for updates to these rules, arguing that their current regulations limit the potential of satellite broadband service. However, major U.S. wireless carriers, including AT&T and Verizon, have expressed concerns about potential interference with terrestrial networks. Yeah, of course they're concerned because it's going to affect their bottom line. Like I said in many videos prior to this one, AT&T and Verizon and T-Mobile, even T-Mobile, even though they're partnering with SpaceX right now and, and Starlink, don't worry, they're going to have competition down the road. Absolutely 100%. SpaceX Starlink will end up being a telecom. In my personal opinion, we will see not just an ISP, but let's see, see if I'm right. Give it a year or two. I should still be around, hopefully. <laughs> Future prospects. As SpaceX continues to deploy more Starlink satellites, the feasibility of using the constellation for navigation purposes becomes increasingly viable. With potential software upgrades, Starlink could offer enhanced positioning services, providing a robust and secure alternative to GPS. This development could revolutionize navigation technologies, offering improved accuracy and resilience against interference. While Starlink was not originally intended for navigation, ongoing research and technological advancements suggest it could play a significant role in the future of global positioning systems. That is absolutely the case. Now, full circle. I told you guys about a year and a half, two years ago, that the accuracy of SpaceX Starlink is really, really good. And back then it was about 4,000, I don't know, 3,000 some odd satellites. Now SpaceX Starlink has over 7,000 satellites and it's growing and growing and growing. By the end of the year, there's going to be well over 800 thousand satellites on orbit. This is going to keep on getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And with the larger constellations and lower to the earth, the ability of triangulation becomes even more and more accurate in comparison to using a GPS satellite sitting at 20,000 kilometers. Remember, the signal is right now being reverse engineered, meaning that these universities are sitting there listening in to that downlink to see where the different sequences and sequence patterns are happening so that they can see and triangulate positioning. OK, and they're getting it down to what are they saying, like seven, seven point seven, somewhere on their meters, which isn't that great, but it's not that bad either. And with just a little bit of extra software coming in from SpaceX, remember, SpaceX Starlink isn't giving these universities anything. They're having to reverse engineer everything. So once that software is out there and they say, listen, we can now use it as a GPS alternative and the software now becomes something that is readily available. Well, Things are going to change and it's going to change really quickly. Remember, GPS is sitting at like, what, 20,000 kilometers higher in altitude. And there's only a few satellites in comparison to thousands of SpaceX Starlink satellites. So you have satellites that are really close to Earth. So they're harder to jam. The signal is really tight. OK, very small nodules or nodes, right, cells where those cones, where those satellites are coming over. And then just doing the triangulation with 7000 of them is really, really accurate. And like I said, I talked to you guys about this before, and I know that the military has already been using SpaceX Starlink for triangulation. And it is my understanding that they have gotten this even closer than GPS meaning that it's going to be sub 0 0.3, 0 0.3. That is the, let's say, closest that GPS can get. It's probably going to be within a foot, right? Maybe even a half a foot is what the triangulation is as of now. But that's military grade. And people don't sometimes understand the difference between military grade and what we use, all right? So for example, Typical civilians using GPS, the GPS has an accuracy of about, let's say, three to five meters. That is civilian based. GPS now for the military gets it down to about one meter, so within about three feet. Now, SpaceX Starlink with the military, one foot, okay? That's what I believe. That's a third. Now, is that the case? 
I've heard that that is the case, but I don't have any, let's say, witnesses or I don't have anything to show that says that that's absolutely the case. But what I can tell you is if they can reverse engineer the universities and get it down to seven meters, let's say, reverse engineering with no software at all, once the software is out there, I think that it's going to be within inches. And this will definitely change navigation as we know it. I mean, just think about planes as we know today. When they come in for a landing, a lot of them use the ILS, right? Their laser, let's say, guidance to bring them in for landing. Highly accurate. Well, when you finally have GPS using SpaceX Starlink, that is as accurate as inches, at that point, you could basically use that instead of using ILS, or you could use it as an alternative if ILS ever went down. So there's a lot of things you can do with it. You don't have to use it as the main, but you can use it as an amazing backup. You don't have to use it for civilian. You could keep using GPS because it really doesn't matter as much, but for military, maybe military goes straight SpaceX Starlink. I don't see why not, once again, Within a third, you're looking at inches. And this is what military is always looking for. And remember, that is with 7,000 satellites. When we double that to 14,000 and then 28,000, remember, Elon Musk said that the final number is gonna be about 43,000 satellites. That's what he calculated. Could you imagine the accuracy with 43,000 satellites? A triangulation would be nuts. As it is now, there's overlap like crazy. There's never any downtime when it comes to triangulation. In comparison to GPS, sometimes there is some outages here, there, and elsewhere. You know, if you're traveling around and all of a sudden you look, you open up your iPhone, you're like, oh, wait a second. Um, it shows me sitting in a bush. Why am I in a bush? And then all of a sudden it pops back and now all of a sudden you're like kind of back on the path. You know, things like that. You're not going to have that. Everything's going to be this fast. You're not dealing with Mio. You're dealing with Leo. Once again, instead of 20 some thousand kilometers in space, 500, a major, major difference. So in my personal opinion, I think that this is great. I think this is great as a backup to GPS in case of some type of cyber warfare that might happen, or maybe there's a conflict zone where they are, let's say, um, scrambling all GPS. Now all of a sudden our planes can't fly anymore because GPS is being scrambled. Well, at that point, now what do you do? You move over to SpaceX Starlink and start using that. So anyways, guys, I really find this stuff interesting. What do you guys think? What do you think that they're going to do with this? Do you think we're going to see GPS with SpaceX Starlink instead of the old GPS satellites? Or do you think that they're just going to use them for military? I think it's going to be a little bit of both, guys. I think it's going to be a little bit of both. We need to have a backup. We need to have alternatives. And right now there's no alternatives. Only those old satellites have been up there forever with old, old systems, right? That have been sitting up there floating for ages. What do you think? Down below. Also, if you don't want to put anything down there, let me just say, put an emoji. At least I know you got to the end of the video, right? But I would like to also know from you, what else do you think that SpaceX Starlink would be good for? What is the next thing? So we know it's great for broadband. It's great for being able to get connection in the middle of nowhere on the top of a mountain in the middle of the ocean, <laughs> wherever, right? And now we know that it's going to be phenomenal for GPS. What is the next thing that they're gonna do with SpaceX Starlink? That is not what it was originally designed for. I always love those type of things. I love seeing things like that. Like for example, medical, the whole super glue thing. Originally that was like glue designed for skin and for internal wounds to like seal up things, right? Now all of a sudden now it's on the market. Super glue, super glue this. Well, they've been using that for a long time, but now they dual purposed it. Same thing holds true here with SpaceX Starlink. Anyways, guys, what say you? Down below, I'd love to hear from you. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com forward slash shop and check out all of my merch, my tees, my shirts, my books, all the stuff over there. If there's something there that you like, please pick it up. Help support me and my family. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected, hopefully through SpaceX Starlink. And we'll see you in the next one. Love you guys. Thank you.